Hey, Money Guy family, it's your host, Brian Preston, back with another episode of Ask the Money Guy. That's right. You guys have financial questions. We've got your financial answers right here in the Tesla. Go to your favorite social, use the hashtag Ask the Money Guy, or go to our website, moneyguy.com, and ask us a question there. It's Brian Preston, the Money Guy. Today's question, Brian, comes from Kara, and this is actually from the Money Guy website, moneyguy.com. She says, hey guys, uh, we have a possible move coming up due to a potential job opportunity. The question we are tossing around right now is whether or not to sell our home. Would it be better to hang on to the house and make it into a rental, or would it be smarter to sell the house now since it's currently our primary so we wouldn't have to pay any capital gains tax? I've searched your archives and haven't really found what I'm looking for. I'd love to hear a show on this topic of selling versus renting, or just an updated conversation on rental properties in general. Uh, Kara, I think that's a fantastic question and one we get a lot. Was it Kara or Karen? Kara. Kara. So Kara, that's a... Or Kara. We're going to go with Kara. Okay. Kara, I think that's a great question. And I resemble this in some ways. So this is, you hit us at a perfect time to ask this question is because a lot of you, you know, as you're selling, maybe you had a, a starter home or a mid-level home, but you're upgrading, you're like, should I, should I sell this thing? Should I turn it into a rental sure. property? What, what are my options? So let me walk you through, because I think there's kind of three things you have to go through here in the decision making. The first thing is, is how big is the gain on your primary residence? Yep. It's a big uh, consideration. I mean, because the thing you have to think about, when you sell your primary residence, a lot of great tax benefits for you because if you lived in, and you alluded to this, Karen, Karen, your question, if you live in your house for two of the last five years, and it's actually less than that if you get transferred for business or other things, but typically it's two out of the last five years, $250,000 for single people, $500,000 for married couples of tax-free gain. Now, the difference is if you were to turn to a rental and you were to sell it and you had even just $100,000 of gain, now all of a sudden you have to pay capital gains tax on the sale of the primary residence or of your rental residence. So the big thing you have to ask yourself, if you have a huge gain on your house, meaning the property is appreciated significantly, if you have a really large gain, it might make sense to not turn it into rental property because you want that tax-free gain. That That's is right. a very powerful thing. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, this is where I will reflect, is that I had a house in South Atlanta that just never completely recovered after the Great Recession. Right. Meaning that I owned this house for over a decade and it's still worth less than what I totally have in it, which is an unfortunate situation. So if you do come to a situation where you have a house that is actually lost value or you have not made much gain, well, the, because the government gives you such a big tax benefit on the capital gain, they also have a provision where you don't get to deduct losses on your primary residence. So if you want to be able to deduct the losses on your primary residence that's at a loss, mm -hmm. you have to actually turn it into rental property. That's right. So, uh, you know, and that's a big part. Now, a lot of people, when they start making the decision, am I going to do rental property or not, I always they always think it's a great tax benefit. Because I'm going to get all these write-offs from doing rental property. Yeah, because it's like $25,000 a year of losses when you take into account depreciation, your mortgage interest, yeah. and everything else. You know, so why wouldn't want to do this because it'd be great to deduct those losses. The caveat that nobody ever talks about is that those deductions, those losses, phase out between $100,000 and $150,000 of income. So if you make between $100,000 and $150,000, probably not going to be able to deduct the loss. Now, you eventually will get the losses when you ultimately sell the property, but it just kind of adds up in the background. So don't do this. Don't let the tax tail wag the dog right. in the fact that you think this is going to be a panacea of awesome tax things. Right. It's just not that way. You do rental property because you think you can make money off of either the appreciation of the property, the cash flow from the rental income, Come. You don't do it just because you know you think you're going to make money off of tax losses. And before we talk about the third, Brian, the, you said it perfectly. The thing you have to do is kind of do the math. What do you expect to bring in from a rental income perspective? What is that relative to the value that you could recognize if you were to sell the house? And you can quickly calculate your rate of return. So if it's only generating two, three, four percent, maybe it doesn't make sense to rent it. You'd be better off selling it. If, however, it generates eight, 10, 12 sure. percent, then it might make sense to rent. So you need to do the mathematics on that and you need to figure out, do I still think that this house will continue to appreciate in the future where I would want to be able to capitalize on that? Or is it probably at an all time high or near the, the most expensive it'll ever be? Those are kind of the mathematics you have to weigh if you just want to approach this from purely an analytical standpoint. However, yeah, and that's your, what I, I was, I was sitting there going, man, I do love the math. But you also have to think about, are you designed or wired to be a landlord? That's right. Now, I will tell you right now, I am a reluctant landlord because I told you I had a house 
that was actually at a loss, and then I had a house that I just couldn't sell. Yep. I mean, it was, I was it was in a depressed market that just was not getting traction, so I had to turn it into rental property yep. just so it didn't sit vacant during a winter. So it would. That, I, I tell you, I'm a reluctant landlord, and here's why I'm a reluctant landlord. I'm constantly sitting there worried about whenever it reaches zero to 20 degrees in Atlanta, mm -hmm. I'm always worrying about what's going to break, freeze, or, or flood. Or flood. Yeah. I mean, it really is one of those things I am just a nervous, I know I'm kind of OCD in that way that I'm always thinking of the negative or glass half empty on what could be breaking yeah. because renters never treat your property like they would if it was theirs because they're renters. Mm -hmm. So they're just not going to take care of it as well. I mean, I even had a place down in Florida years ago where we had just a drip, drip, drip leak right. that turned into a thousand, thousand dollar repair yep. because none of the, the, the short-term rentals were reporting it to the management company that there was a leak behind the commode. Well, that ended up getting mold on the, you know, behind the walls. Yep. We had to rip out stuff. So I'm just telling you, be careful. If you're, if you're one of those people that's not wired to be a landlord, it's okay. I mean, not everybody wants to be in the rental marketplace. So you have to take that into your decision making. And ultimately, the bug stops with you. If the HVAC goes out, or if the roof springs a leak, or if whatever the case may be, ultimately, you're the one who has to take care of that. You're the one who has responsibility for that. And that may just not be something that you even want to trouble yourself with. So guys, great question, Kara. I think that a lot of people are going to probably like this question because it does, you know, dip into the real estate marketplace with investing and people ask us about that all the time. So keep the questions coming. I'm your host, Brian Preston, Mr. Bo Hansen. You know, remember, go to our website, moneyguy.com. You can ask questions there or you can go to any of our social media and just do the hashtag AskMoneyGuy. That's right. I'm your co-host, Bo Hansen, Brian Preston. <laughs> Money Guy out. I threw you off.